Hello everyone! Welcome to my Reborn Art channel. I'm Anime Christie, and today we'll be talking about digital versus traditional art. I asked you all on Twitter a while ago if you wanted to see my channel back under the conditions that it would become an art channel, and a good majority of you said yes. Others wanted me to stay dead, but oh well. I also put up a follow-up poll asking what I should do for the first video, and a topic discussing digital art versus traditional art was in session. So, without further ado, let's get started. Digital and traditional art have been a part of me for a long time now, but it's safe to say the majority of my work has been digital. I recently dabbled back into traditional art because of Inktober, and some of you have expressed your concern for my Gothic obsession, but fret not, dear viewers. I'm dialing it back. N no, I'm broke. I'm not gonna. Ah! So, in this video, I'm not going to say that one medium is better than the other. They both have their pros and cons, but this time around, I'm just going to go about it through my experiences. So, let's begin with digital art. Now, one of my favorite things I've started to appreciate more as Inktober went on is that damn, it's so easy to manipulate your sketches and drawings to be exactly the way you want them to be. If you don't like your drawing, poof, it's gone. You have every color of the rainbow. You have access to millions of brushes from your program and the internet. There are so many tutorials and overall, it just seems more cost effective. That, and you typically are able to keep your desk cleaner this way. Some of the basic things you'll need is a computer, a tablet, because drawing with the mouse is crazy hard, and an art program. If you're on the cheaper side, say 50 to $100, then just buy yourself a tablet with that screen. Huion is a good alternative starting out since it's cheaper, but I know some people like to start out with the Wacom tablet. I've only ever used Huion, so I don't think I'd be able to tell you the differences between the two, but there are other videos on that subject if you go looking for them. If you're going for the expensive route with an on-screen tablet with a big frame along with hotkeys, you're looking to spend about 400 to 1,500, depending on what tablet you're looking for. Huion will be one of your best bets if you're looking for a good, cheaper alternative to a Wacom Cintiq, which can be a little pricey. But if you're looking for something that isn't Huion or you don't like Huion's products, then I suggest looking around on Amazon or even watching other people's reviews on YouTube to see what they think about these other tablets that maybe you've been looking at. As for programs, there are many to choose from out there. Photoshop, Paint Tool Sci, Sketchbook, Clip Studio Paint, and I've been hearing good things about Procreate. If you're looking for specific functions on a program, then do your research to determine which is the right brand for you. I use a combination of Photoshop and Sketchbook because I like doing my line art, sketching, and smudging on Sketchbook, and Photoshop has elements that I want in a program to manipulate layers and add-on effects. That and I like to borrow Photoshop brushes to incorporate into my images. And here we go into the cons. So, what would happen if your tablet were to, oh, I don't know, break down, not work, and all these other technical difficulties with your electronic devices and so on? Well, you're kinda screwed! Your program didn't save, you're drawing on the wrong layer, so many things can happen, whether it's you calling the computer stupid because you're too mad to admit that it was your own fault, or the computer is being stupid and you're sitting at your desk, stuck. These things can happen, and if your tablet is broke and you somehow didn't feel like paying for the warranty, or just expired, you're looking to pay another insert how much you paid for this tablet here, and all that money you earned during art commissions has gone down the drain. Not to mention staring at your screen so long trying to get that perfect line can be exhausting and hurt your eyes after a while. And one thing I don't like about digital art sometimes is when you have to set it up. I have to plug in two ports into my computer, put on an art glove, turn on the tablet, turn on the program, and then lose all forms of motivation because dang it, this took longer than it needed to. Well, that's my experience with that. Let's move on to traditional. In contrast to my previous statement, all you need to do is get your sketchbook out, get your art supplies, whatever you use to make whatever you do, and well, you're ready to go. In the video shown, I'm using my sketchbook so far to do some Inktober for 2018. If you want to see all the drawings I did, and it's been completed for a while now, 
Just go look at my Twitter and scroll through the media and you'll eventually find Inktober stuff. Well, my, my shameless self-promotion stuff is uh, in the description below, so be sure you check that out. So, how do you go about this? Well, here's the thing. Art can be made with so many mediums. Pencils, colored pencils, inks, pastels, markers, watercolors, acrylics, oils, gouache. It, it goes on. Some people pay hundreds for the small set of paints, and some people go to their local grocery store and go to the school supply section and grab whatever Crayola set they want. And you know what? That's fine. In the end, art is whatever you make of it. Ah, heck. Okay, kids, you're gonna learn something very, very strange today. People used to paint with eggs. Birth of Venus? Tempura painting, aka painting with pigments and egg. And if you ask me, there is nothing like the texture you can feel on a painting. The rough edges and ridges on a canvas after painting after it's been dried is one of the best feelings you can ever feel. It's, it's just nice. But then again, maybe you're not a weirdo like me and don't feel that need, but you get the point I'm trying to say. It's a great feeling to touch what's there compared to a digital painting, which is just, just a computer screen. But, depending on what you buy, it can get expensive. I prefer using Copic markers over any other marker out there, but there are 358 colors. I own about uh, 150 markers by the time this video comes out, and through deals and auctions on eBay, that m bunch of markers cost me less than $775. Keep in mind, Copic markers cost about $5.24 for each marker on their website. And don't think you're getting a good deal by paying for those three packs or Copic cases, because you're going to be paying for $5.24 a marker. Unless you get the chow, but there's less colors so I like getting the sketch markers. Luckily, Copic markers also offer various inks so you don't have to keep buying the same color marker over and over again after it dies out. Here is a chart I found that tells you how much a batch of various ink you can get if you're interested in getting any of these markers. The point is that supplies is expensive. Ran out of watercolors or you don't have the right color or don't have the right colors to mix into another color? Well, you gotta go out to buy more. It's so expensive to make art. And speaking of making art, sometimes you have to live with your eyesore of a mistake. With digital, most of the time when you make a mistake, you can hit the magical buttons of Control and Z, or whatever button you have programmed into your hotkeys that suddenly makes it like it was never there. Traditional seems to be about trial and error, and there are ways to improve your skills, but when you make a wrong curve in your brushstroke and have to look at yourself and frustrate yourself because damn it, I could have prevented that! So. What have I learned about both experiences? Well, here's a chart that summarizes the previous points. You may pause to review them. So, as you can see, both mediums have pros and cons. But if your heart lies with digital art, then good for you. If you're more of a traditional person, good for you. Most people have the reasons why they prefer one medium over the other. But is there a way to combine both of them? Let's say you have both digital and traditional mediums on you. You've made enough money in your life to where you can afford both. What can you do to achieve different results? Say you're like me, you don't feel like getting eraser boogers all over the floor of your nice bedroom, and your sketches don't always come out as you want them to be. That's when you go out to get your tablet, sketch out something on there to easily fix your mistakes, then you print it out, get a light box, and just trace over your sketch in whatever paper you like. Light boxes can be fairly cheap. While I am a Copic fanatic, I can't get enough of them. I refuse to pay 200 to 300 for a light box because I am an artist who would rather use that money to buy more markers. Anyways, you just ink or double sketch from there depending on how you're feeling, and here you go. Ran out of inks or they don't look as good and smooth as your digital drawings? Print that sucker out and begin coloring from there. Maybe keep in mind that regular copy paper isn't that great if you use Copics. 
so be sure to draw on a smooth surface that you don't mind ruining, such as cardboard. Did you draw a sketch in class today because you were bored and decided, hey, this would make for a great art print? Or even, hmm, this picture doesn't look as sharp as I want it, so I shouldn't post it on social media until I tweak a few things. Then you can either run your drawing through a scanner or take a picture of it. Open it up on your program and work from there. The list can go on for miles. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and if you want to stick around, then be sure to subscribe. All my other media will be in the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!